All right, you guys, today we're gonna to talk about my grapes and why I actually think growing grapes here in the Northeast, in the Mid-Atlantic, is actually one of the most reliable food sources that you can grow. And I'm shocked to even say that because I would, I would have told you guys really a couple weeks ago that that was completely false and that I wouldn't recommend growing grapes in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Um, the reason for that is that there's a lot of humidity here. There's a lot of disease pressure. And usually on these leaves, we end up seeing some mildew. Of course, you guys can get some uh, mildew resistant varieties as I have here. But you'll also see these little black spots here. This is called black rot. And the black rot actually affects not only the leaves, but it affects the grapes. And once you have it, it's very difficult to, uh, to get rid of and to prevent your grapes from getting black rot. And if your grapes have black rot, essentially they will mummify and they'll turn into mummy berries and uh, you won't be able to eat them. You won't have a harvest. And again, once you have the disease, it's impossible for the most part to get rid of it. So I've struggled with that disease for a long time and this year, with the help of uh, some other growers, I had learned that you can wrap your wax paper, or I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead here. You can wrap your grape clusters with wax paper bags. And we did a separate video on that wrapping. The last video we did, we talked about actually unwrapping them and showing you guys the harvest. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys literally perfect grape clusters that I harvested off of really only two vines here. This is my Mars here in the center. And then also I have a Himrod on the end. So between Himrod and this guy here, Mars, which has put out the most amount of fruit for me, we had an exceptional harvest this year. I'm about five years into growing my grapes. Um, they've got a decent location, not the best. There's a lot of shade over here, actually. This area maybe gets about four, uh, five to six hours of light. So not the most airflow for disease prevention, but with the help of these wax paper bags, it's so simple, just wrapping the cluster with the bag, stapling it around the side. Essentially what you do is, real quick, th there was a grape cluster uh, probably right here, or it might've been right here. And essentially the grape cluster would hang down you would wrap the wax paper bag around this stem and then staple it together here. And that would keep the entire grape cluster from getting hit with any sort of disease. So now that I know that you can completely avoid disease here, what are the other problems with grapevines? Well, there's almost none. Uh, I mean, it depends on where you guys live. Obviously, you may get in the south some Pierce's disease. Uh, you may also get some... Japanese beetle damage. The Japanese beetles do really love biting holes in the leaves and you need to preserve these leaves. You need to get a variety that is, you know, resistant to these diseases, to the mildew specifically, so that you can keep the leaves to put the carbohydrates into the fruits. So that's really important. But I haven't struggled too much after the first year or two. It's been a long time since I've personally struggled with Japanese beetle damage. So for me, I'm not necessarily all that concerned with it. And over time, these plants get a bit stronger and it's not really, I think, a big issue here. What is becoming an issue, and I, I am reluctant to say in this video that everybody should grow grapes in the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic, because now we have the spotted lanternfly here in my yard, these little guys, which uh, are a menace and they love grapes apparently. They love figs in terms of uh, fruiting plants. I haven't seen them all on my fig trees really at all. So it seems like they prefer the grapes over everything. And that's the European grapes here. Um, don't know how much percentage of European grape are in them, but they're not bothering my muscadine grapes. And I'm happy to also report that fairly soon, I'm gonna have my first real harvest of muscadine grapes as well off of these very young vines. And um, 
So we've been having a pretty good year for the grapes, I guess. But with the muscadine, the difference here is that you don't have to necessarily, uh, you know, spray them or care for them in any unique way. It's as simple as they just do well here, and that's all that matters, is that they've got all that disease resistance built right in. The leaves are almost spotless, perfect, again, but... You know, if you're going to grow these grapes, which in my mind you should, uh, the European varieties, they're just so good. They really are. Um, and I'll show you guys the harvest right now. For all the reasons I mentioned, they're so easy to grow because of that, uh, that black rot just not being an issue. Now, I really hope in the future that these, uh, these lanternflies are not going to become an issue, but assuming they're not, I have a very reliable food source here that's perfect. Look at this. So admittedly, these are not the best quality store-bought grapes just because, well, they're kind of past their prime and this is not, in all honesty, the best store-bought variety that you can get. I know that those, uh, those moon drop grapes, and there's a, maybe a couple other varieties that are actually really quite good. Um, However, they, even the Moondrop grape just does not, it just pales in comparison to the grapes that I was able to grow this year. I mean, they're literally perfect. They're so sweet. I mean, they're uh, complex. They're just amazing pieces of fruit. And uh, I don't really know how else to prove it to you guys. I literally have perfect clusters of grapes, perfect. And this is all because of the bagging that we did. I left some in the bag to show you guys that these are the bags I was using. And that's, that's it. I mean, it's just basically a wax paper bag that we wrap around the, uh, the cluster before the cluster gets any disease or has any chance to get infected with disease. Here's another cluster of grapes. And uh, I think these are the variety here. The, the black one here is Mars. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the green variety is Interlochen, which has admittedly not performed as well, which is, I think, why the difference in the size of the grapes. There's also less bunches. The bunches aren't as, uh, as full, it seems like, although... Uh, there is some pretty good consistency, but I'll tell you that my Mars has put out a lot more fruit this year, and they're equally the same age. I think, for whatever reason, my interlocking has just had a rough go, but they're extremely, extremely good. Really hard to beat. And the coolest thing about these grapes, both of them, are something called slip skin which means when you, when you bite into this with your mouth, I'm gonna kinda you know, do the same thing with my fingers here, is that the pulp separates from the skin. So you have the pulp, and this gives you an interesting mouthfeel in my opinion. This separates different flavor, very grapey, some, actually some good acidity to it on the Mars, and then you have the skin separate, and the skins are equally as awesome, but different in its own little way. And uh, I could have let these guys hang on the tree. I may have mentioned that, but they would have sweetened up even further. Um, really nothing was getting to them. I think these bags do a great job of concealing them from the birds and also protecting them from disease. But... I did lose a cluster to the birds and I thought, oh, well, I got to harvest all these guys before I lose them all. So uh, the birds have been relentless this year. It's really quite crazy. But anyway, I just wanted to show you really the, the, really the incredible difference. It's not just the flavor between these store-bought grapes. Also, you could even get a bigger size in this particular situation. Um, you know... It's a way better flavor. I've mentioned that. It's a different eating experience in the, the form of a slip skin. 
versus just a regular old table grape like this. You know, if I were to break this open with my hand, the skin does not come loose. The, the pulp is attached to the skin. So, I mean, they're not bad, but they're nowhere near as complex as this. So it's been amazing, I think, this year to know that I can now grow grapes without any issues. The issue now, though, is becoming that we have the spotted lanternfly that's been on my grapevines now. Not in crazy number, but enough numbers now to make me start to worry. And, uh, yeah. So there it is. This is the Mars grape. The interlocking, we can make some raisins. I mean, I'm just... Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? I mean, look at that. So, oh man. The Mars is especially very good. But we will uh, we'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks for watching. Grow some grapes at home. All you got to do is bag them. Take care, guys.